session of Ear Training Live. I'm Julian Brady. we're going to spend the next hour, we're going to transcribe three songs by ear, and we're going to transcribe each song in the same key of C minor, which is also E flat major. Now if you're watching the replay, make sure you check the description box below, I'm going to put timestamps so you can skip ahead to where the actual content begins, but for the first few minutes I'm just going to be welcoming people to this live stream. Now the three songs we're going to transcribe are Rock the Casper by The Clash, Don't You Want Me by Human League, and then a Johnny Cash cover of Hurt. The original song was by Nine Inch Nails, but we're going to do the Johnny Cash cover for this song. Now in particular, we're going to focus on bass lines because I had a, some requests last week from Kerry and from other subscribers to talk a bit more about bass lines. And some of these songs, certainly the first two, feature some quite melodic bass lines, so we're going to be transcribing the bass lines, but we're also going to be transcribing the melody as well. Okay, so I'm just going to welcome people. Again, if you're watching the replay, just look at the description box and skip ahead to where the actual content starts. Okay, so we've got some comments coming in. Okay, 61 people. Roberta, hey Julian, hello Roberta. Zika or Zeka, hi from Ukraine, guys. Welcome. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you had a good weekend. So I've been looking forward to this. Okay. And hello from Denmark, from from Pitzler. Hey, Julian from Kentucky. Amy, is that right? Uh, cool want says hi. Hi everyone. This is great to have you. Kerry's here. Good to have you, Kerry. And uh, oh, Peter. Sorry, Peter. Hi from Poland. From Jula. I have to be quick with these comments. Hey, buddy. Good to see you from Shizzy's Wiki. Another hi from Poland. Wow. Oh, hello from Brazil, from Victor. Tata, hi from Indonesia. Hi from Germany, from nine, 90s. Uh, good to have you all here. So the first song we're gonna do is Rock the Casper. We're gonna focus on the chorus section and we, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the bass line. We're gonna transcribe the bass line in particular, but also the melody. And then we're gonna figure out the chords. Hello from India and California from Shizzy's. Okay, well it's lovely to have you all here. Are you guys ready for some ear training? Hi from Florida, from Tanz Tanzania, hello from India. Wow, worldwide audience today. Hi from Poland. Okay, so I think we're gonna get stuck into some content. So the first song, I'll get the, uh, the camera set up, the phone set up. So I have to make sure that you can't see the keyboard, but also that it is a good shot and it doesn't move around. Okay. Let's see. I'm actually gonna skip this. So how's your weekend? People doing anything exciting? Let's see if that works. Got a little tripod here. Been with the musical ear since conception. It is highly legit. Wow, thank you, Ryan. I'm I'm glad to have you part of the course, and it's been. In fact, I've got some exciting new updates coming soon for the 2.0. I've been filming module three, four, and five of 2.0, and I'm going to be rolling those out over the next few weeks. So thank you, Ryan. Miles, good to have you here. Glad you made it. Sorry guys, this is the hardest part, getting the camera right. Once it's in place, I can leave it there. I think that's good. Got my microphones running. Okay, first song. Rock the Casper. transcribe this as though it's in C minor. I don't know what key the original song is in. Uh, to, to start with, we could either do the melody or the bass line. There's never a right or wrong way order to do it. It sort of depends on the song, whichever part of the song catches your attention most. Uh, let, let me see, I'll play it a few times. You can choose which one you want to focus on first.
how about we warm up with the melody? The melody's the simple part, so in the key of C minor, and we have a melodic shape here, I want you to listen to the intervals. You can hear they're mostly steps, either half steps or whole steps. And I want you to see if you can spot in particular a half step. If you can spot a half step, it's going to be very useful because you can then figure out where within the notes of C minor it can be, because there's only two places that there can be a half step. Any ideas for these notes? Again, if you're joining us, we're transcribing Rock the Casbah in the key of C minor. Which notes do you think those are? Question coming in, do you use C natural minor or harmonic minor or melodic minor? I'm using natural minor. Most music, 95% of music is diatonic. And when we talk about diatonic music, we're talking about the natural minor scale with no tweaked notes, no tweaked sevenths or sixths. So I'm literally talking about the scale C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat. So when I talk about the key of C minor, I'm talking about C natural minor scale. That's a great question. So we've got some answers coming in. Good job, Mon. So, I hear a half step in the first interval. So that means that these two notes, the first two notes, can only be two places within our key. Can you tell me where within C minor these two notes could fit? Could it be C to D? No, because C to D is a whole step. Could it be C to D flat? No, because that would take us out of our key. So you just go up the seven notes of our key. And you look for where that interval can be found. And this just this doesn't and this doesn't work just for half steps. This works for any interval. If you hear a major third, well, that instantly narrows down your melody's location. In this case, to three places. So this is a good way to find where your melody fits within the key is to listen to at least one or two intervals, and actually the more intervals in a row you can figure out, the more you can narrow down your location. And this is the technique that I used for a long time when I was starting with ear training, because you don't want to just have intervals floating in space. That's my term for when you have intervals and you don't, you, you know the intervals, but you don't know where they belong within the key. So you have to find a way to figure out where those intervals fit within the scale, and when I was starting ear training, a good way of doing that was listen to at least one or two or three intervals in a row, and then scan the notes of C minor scale and figure out where those intervals can't fit and then the few places where they could fit. Often you'll be left with two locations. It's just how the key works. There's an interval pattern to the key. Often you, you end up with two places that an interval pattern could fit, but two places is still a lot better than having no idea. You, you then have a 50-50 chance of getting it right and then there are additional techniques to actually narrow down which one is the correct location. So in this case we hear a, a half step. First, note, first two notes are, are a half step so that means it can only be two places in C minor scale either D and E flat or G and A flat. So instantly we know it's one of these two places. Let's listen to the melody a bit more, see if we can figure out which one it is. in this melody? Any of these notes sound like the root? It 
sounds like it ends on the root to me. It sounds very resolved. In fact, a lot of melodies will end on the root. There's this concept I've talked about with tension notes resolving to resolution notes. And in the long run, every note wants to make its way back to the root. It might not make it back in one leap, but in the long run, when you let these tension notes resolve, they tend to make their way back to the root. It's not the composer's goal to end on the, on the root, it's just the way it naturally happens. So this melody ends on the root. This is C. And now that we know that it ends on the root, we can then backtrack and figure out what the starting note was. It was either a D or an E flat or a G and an A flat. So this is the end. C. Then the melody starts again. Did that sound like it was just up a note going to D and E flat? No, it sounded like a bigger leap. You guys have guessed it. That's right, it went up to the fifth and the melody starts on a G. That's the hard part done. We, have, we are now what I call locked in. We know where the melody is within the key. This is the point where transcribing becomes easy. We've, un we've unlocked the puzzle because now we know where the melody ends and starts. We know where it belongs within the key. Now we don't need to be super precise with our intervals anymore because we know what the notes are in C minor scale. We know that if it goes up a note, it's gone to the note above or if it goes down a note, it's gone to the note below. We're not having to do the hard part of, identify, of identifying intervals precisely. If we hear a third now, we don't even need to figure out if it's a major third or a minor third. We just know that a third, say above C in our key, is going to be E flat. So we don't have to even, even waste time figuring out if it's a minor third or a major third. So let's demonstrate. We know that it starts on the G now. We know it goes up to A flat, G. What are those two notes? G. We don't even need to listen to if they're whole steps or half steps because we know the notes of C minor scale. G, F, E flat, G, A flat, G, F, E flat, G, F. Kerry's got it right. In fact, a lot of you were posting the right answer before I got to it, so well done. G, A flat, G, F, E flat, G, F. Then we have repeated notes, another reason why it gets easier now. We've done the hard part, we've unlocked the puzzle. Now is, this is the point where transcribing becomes relatively easy. We hear a repeated note. This is the F again. last notes. Well, we know that it ends on the root. We figured that out to begin with. F, B flat, C. Well done, Dimitri. Kerry, almost correct. Good job. You got C, G, C, D, the correct interval pattern. Just um, sort of the wrong starting note. If you'd done that interval pattern starting from F, it would be F, B flat, C, C. G, A flat, G, F, E flat, G, F. F, B flat, C, C. F, B flat, C, C. Now, Kerry, you said G, C, D. How could you figure out uh, if that's incorrect or correct before going to your instrument to test your answer. Well, you did a good job because you identified the intervals correctly. You also did a good job because you said three notes which are within our key of C minor. And the only thing you got wrong is you got them a whole step above the actual picture. So it was actually F, B flat, C. One method you can use to uh, figure this out beforehand, before you test your answer and figure it out, is to is the concept of tension notes and resolution notes. The root, the third and the fifth of the scale are always going to sound resolved, especially the root. The root is the most resolved sounding note of all. And all notes want to make their way back to the root. So in this case, the seventh, the B flat is supposed to sound like a tension note which wants to resolve up to the root. 
which it does. So if you listen to the tension notes, this melody is resolving up to the root. And when it gets to the root, it sounds resolved. Whereas your theory, G, C, D, D, D would be a tension note. It wouldn't sound resolved. D would want to resolve back to the root. So that's a little sort of extra thing you can listen for. If you're not sure where the location is, just remember the root should sound very resolved. Also the root, the third and the fifth in general should sound resolved. That's more of an advanced tip, um, but you will get to a stage with your transcribing where you have, a common problem is to have two locations that a melody could be, and often it's hard to figure out which one's correct. You want to be 100% certain, but this, this concept of tension notes and resolution notes is something that helped me. That's the melody done. Now let's turn our focus to the chords. How do we transcribe chords by ear? We don't listen to the chords, we listen to the bass line. So, we're in C minor, and here's how the chord progression starts. Can anyone hear the root in this bass line? A C, again, even in a bass line it's gonna sound very resolved. Is the starting note sound resolved? Great job guys, a lot of people saying the last note, the last note is a C. Again, I just said that melodies tend to work their way back to the root, well the same kind of goes for bass lines as well. Bass lines, especially this bass line, is really just a melody, and it's just played in the lower range, and this bass line melody ends on the root. So that's very useful for us to know. We've spotted at least one note. We're now sort of locked in, as I said. We're not just dealing with intervals floating in space. We know that this bass line ends on the root. So now that we know that, can you tell me what the first note is? Ending note, starting note. People are either saying G or F. I'm seeing about 50-50 of each. Good job, guys. You're both roughly correct. It's either a fourth or a fifth. Fourths and fifths are often easily confused. That's why I always use a stepping stone to check, double check, that I have a fourth correct or a fifth correct. Even to this day, I often, even though I sort of just know that's a fourth, I like to double check, or that's a fifth, and I'll double check. So how would we, we check? Sing a stepping stone. Dum, da, 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 So now we know that it's not a fifth because I'm singing a half step and then I only have to sing a whole step to get to the top note. So this is a fourth. That means the starting note is F the fourth of C minor scale. So. F, what note is this? the whole bass line a few times. Yeah. C, C. So this is a C, F. And it goes
goes up to C again. This is the root. What note is this? We're locked in, shouldn't be difficult. Is it a B natural? No, because that's not in our key. We don't even need to get specific with whether it's a half step or a whole step. We just hear that C has gone down a note, down a step to B flat within our key. How about these two notes? C, B flat. What interval are we hearing? a half step in a bass line that tells us it's two places it's either G and A flat or D and E flat now actually in a bass line when you hear a half step it's, you can be even more precise because the two chord which is D diminished very rarely gets used especially in normal diatonic music like 98% of music this chord just gets avoided so that means if you hear a half step in a bass line, it's very unlikely going to be D and E flat, because that would be D diminished and E flat major, almost guaranteed to be the fifth and the sixth, which is G and A flat. G, so G, G, A flat. And again, that's more confirmation that we have the right location for our bass line. So, so far, we end on C, goes up to F, C, B flat, G, A flat, repeated note, don't have to figure it out again, G, this is G again, what three notes does it end on? Sound familiar? That's correct. G, E flat, C. Just a minor triad going back to the root, which we know. We know that this bass line ends on the root. So we have the bass line transcribed. Now we can use these bass notes to tell us what the chords are above. So below an F, well above an F, what chord will we have? F in the bass would indicate what type of chord in the key of C minor. Would it be F major? No, because there's not an A natural in C minor scale. That's correct, Miles, it would be F minor. That's the four chord. Goes to C. What type of chord is that going to be? It's correct, C minor. B flat, B flat in the bass. Is that going to be B flat major or minor? It's correct, it's going to be B flat major. G in the bass. Is this going to be a G major chord or a G minor chord? Remember I said we're in C natural minor, which has a B flat in it. So that's going to be a G minor. Then it goes up to A flat. What type of chord? A flat major or A flat minor? Just build a stack of thirds from A flat and use only notes from C minor scale. See which type of chord you end up with a C and an E flat that's an A flat major chord that's correct Miles and David then we have a G again repeated bass note is the chord gonna for some reason changed no it's gonna be the same old G minor chord and then lastly E flat in the bass that's gonna be an E flat is it a major chord or a minor chord in C minor, it's going to be an E flat major chord. And 
and then ends on C, which is C minor. Great job guys, we just transcribed the chorus, we did the melody, then the bass line, and then the bass line told us what the chords are. <clears throat> so does that mean that we're finished here? Does that mean we're finished? No. There's one final step that I like to do. Once I've transcribed the melody, the bass line and the chords, I like to just double check that my melody answer fits with the chords. And I'll do this before I go to the piano and test, because once because you can only learn from a song while you're doing this figuring it out. Once you know the answer, you can't ever forget it. You can't go back and learn it again. So this is a precious sort of time when you're learning a song. You have to, you, all, all of your learning from the song is gonna happen before you test your answer. So I like to do one extra step, which is I like to check that my melody notes look as though they sort of match the chords. And what I mean by that is that the chords contain the same notes in the melody. So let's take a look. So a lot of notes in the melody to begin with, G, A flat, G, F, E flat, G, F. But I would say the main note that it resolves to is an F. And the chord we have written down is F minor. So that's a match. That looks good to me. C minor and B flat major, no notes, so we can't check there. Then we have G minor going to A flat major, and the melody plays F, B flat, C, C. That's enough of a match for me. The F would be a seventh of G, which is okay, sometimes happens in diatonic music. But it goes down to a B flat, which is a chordal tone of G minor. And then for the A flat major, we have a C in the melody, and that is a perfect match. We have a chordal tone of the chord, so that's telling me we have the right answer. sort of it ends we have repeated melody notes and it ends on a C and the chord it ends on is a C minor so I would be worried if I had C minor in my chord and the melody was a D that wouldn't be a match I'd also be a bit worried if there was an A flat in the melody and my chord was C minor but in this case we've gone through and um, it doesn't have to be a perfect match, but it needs to sort of point consistently to the same sort of chord, the same sort of harmony. So, I, so if I wasn't playing this at the piano and I'd listened to this, I would now be ready to test my answer. I'd go to the piano and I'd have done all of this working out in my head as you guys have done, and I'd sit down and I'd play it. As the chorus transcribed, that was the section I wanted to look at for this piece. Again, I wanted to focus on bass lines today a bit, not, not purely bass lines, but I chose three songs that had a melodic bass line. Transcribing a bass line works the same way as melody. The only thing that makes it a bit trickier is it's outside the sort of sweet spot of human hearing, so it can be a bit tricky to identify the changes in notes in the bass range. But apart from that, we do the same thing. We listen to the intervals, we scan the scale for where those intervals could fit. We listen out for the root. If we hear the root, which we probably will in a bass line, that tells us where these intervals fit. So, well done. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. Any questions come up during that? Okay, <clears throat> so I think there's a bit of a delay, but essentially we're going to go to the next song. Sorry to bother you. Your name, Julian? Yes, my name is Julian. Um, okay, I think we'll go to the next song. 
inverted chords. Inverted chords are virtually never used. They get taught. They get taught a lot. I, um, you know, during my my college degree, we did ear training labs three times a week, an hour each time, and I'd already learned how to play music by ears. But I always enjoyed, you know, going to the the classes, and a lot of the focus was on inverted chords. And you know, a teacher would play this, and they'd ask, "Is this a major or a minor chord?" You'd have to figure that out, and then they'd ask. Is this chord played in root position or in first inversion or second inversion? And yes, it was, it's always a fun challenge. You can practice that. But honestly, the truth is that 99.999% of chords are played in root position, which means the bass line is playing the root. So above. So for a C minor chord, the bass line is playing C 99.999% of the time. And the fact is that it's just not very beneficial to spend lots of hours focusing on chord inversion. There's one chord that does get used in inversion, and the telltale sign is when you hear a D in the bass, as I've said in past videos. There's one chord that's very rarely used, D diminished. So if you do hear a D in the bass line, it's, not, it's very unlikely going to be D diminished. What it's probably going to be is B flat major played in first inversion. And, and here is the chord progression that it gets used in. This is that inverted chord. So I'm not going to uh, go too, too much into this because I have to save my voice for the two remaining songs, but you know, quick, quick lesson on inversion very rarely used, you can be very confident that the bass line is playing the root of the chord above and there's not a whole much, there's not too much benefit from just sitting around trying to figure out chord inversion. So, next song, Human League, uh, Don't You Want Me? Start with the bass line. Key of C minor. What do you think the starting note is here? C, that's a good guess. You're correct. If you ever have to guess a starting note for a bass line, C is a good guess. So we know the starting note. Can you tell me what the next two notes are? Sing it back in slow motion. Got a descending interval, just sing it backwards, do it as a, a ascending interval. Da -da 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 Stepping stone tells me it is a fourth, it goes down a fourth. C C Tonic. What note is this? C, G, B flat, C, E flat, E flat, C. Da, da, da. Some people saying F, that's close. Someone says E. Is there an E natural in C minor scale? No, that tells you it's not an E. It can only be the seven notes of C minor scale. Unless it sounds particularly quirky and unusual, that would be a sign that it's breaking out of key or it's not diatonic in the first place. But this melody sounds standard diatonic to me. Doesn't sound weird. That would be weird. phrase. Any 
any guesses on these notes? Well, we know the last note is a C, because we've heard that note before. So you just work up backwards. How many notes are preceding it? second, third, fourth, and fifth. That's correct, guys. It starts on F, 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 G, F, E flat, D, C, 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 G, B flat, C, C, G, B flat, E flat, C, C, G, B flat, sorry, C, C, G, B flat, C, F, G, Well done, we just transcribed the bass line. Was that difficult? I mean, we're all at different levels, it's fine, but hopefully it makes sense. You know, we had a logical starting note, was the root. Then we had a predominantly pentatonic melody. Kept coming back to the note that we knew, which was C. And then it just ended with some stepwise movement. Hopefully that's quite simple. Now we'll take a look at the melody. What notes are these? in this melody. Well done guys. So C E flat C E flat C E flat C E flat C this. This was a bit of a leap. Do we have to figure it out as a leap? No, there's often another way to do it. In this case, you could figure out the interval if you want. Personally, there's always a quicker way than figuring out a big interval. And in this case, what's the first interval when it, when it jumps up? Is that a whole step or a half step? That's the smallest interval I can imagine. That means it's a half step. And we can use the half step location method to tell us that's one of two places within our key. It's either D and E flat or it's G and A flat, G and A flat. But we know it was on the root and it's a bigger leap than going to D and E flat. So it must have gone to G and A flat. Well done, Kerry. Everyone posting the right answer. Roberta, well done. And we, we didn't even have to figure out that it's a fifth or a fourth or a sixth. And then it becomes easy. We're locked in now. We know where we are within the key. We don't need to be super precise with intervals. We just, we know what the notes of C minor scale are. So we can just follow this melody as it runs around. G, A flat. That must have been G, A flat, G, F. That's correct, Fernando. How about these two notes? Well, we know we've, we're sort of hearing repeated notes. We know that the root is this note. So that must have been E flat, C, B flat. And we've unlocked the melody now. We're gonna hear lots of repetition slight variations but basically the same few notes being repeated e flat e flat c b flat and if 
you're just joining us, we're transcribing every song in the key of C minor slash E flat major. Just so this isn't confusing. How about the chords? Let's switch our attention to the chords. How do we transcribe chords? That's correctly, that's correct. We don't listen to the chords, we listen to the bass line. What interval are we hearing? Any guess as to what these two notes are? C to e, e flat, someone says A flat to B flat, someone says F minor. Okay, so no consensus here whatsoever on what these two notes are. Kerry says C to F. Doesn't this interval sound small? This doesn't sound like a fourth or a third. This is a whole step. Da, 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 da. Whole step is the most natural interval for a human to sing. Lots of nursery rhymes, like three blind mice that just use whole steps. This chord progression is a common shape, and it's what I call the never-ending six, six, seven, or th that's if you're numbering it from C minor scale. If you're numbering from E flat major scale, because you number everything from E flat major, you know, root second third, or you can number it from C minor. If you're numbering from E flat major scale, this is the never-ending 4-5 progression, just keeps repeating. 4-5. So this is A flat and B flat in the bass. Chords above are going to be A flat major and B flat major. This is a common shape, this is a common chord progression, and I'll play you some examples in a minute to demonstrate this, but this is this these two sort of non-resolved chords, which just can get repeated for whole songs in some cases. You know, we have a, a Katy Perry song. Of songs, quite a few songs that use this, they use it sometimes for the whole song, and it's very listenable. Oh, actually, there's a Fleetwood Mac song as well. Um, the main song they, they wrote, how's it go again? Um, a flat major, B flat major. sign of this common shape is you hear this bass line that just repeats it's a whole step a flat b flat a flat b flat and neither of these chords sound resolved it's very effective it keeps the listener listening because you want to hear it resolve to the one chord c minor or the one chord of the relative major scale which is e flat major Final example, if anyone ever played the game California Games, there was that surfing level, and that used this chord progression. In fact, that level is what taught me this common shape in the first place. E flat major, B flat major.
goes on and on and on. If you want to learn any of these common shapes, I recommend going away and writing a short composition that uses them. That's the best way I found to hardwire any music theory to your brain, is to go away and write a 10 minute, you know, spend 10 minutes writing a quick composition. That's how I learn my music theory, how I learn how these things sound. Go away and write a short composition where you just solo over this chord progression. So, we figured out the chords. we figured out the chords does that mean we're finished no there's that final step I like to do before testing my answer I like to check that the melody and the chords are pointing to the same answer I want my chords to contain most of the melody notes in them certainly the prominent melody notes so above a flat major we have E flat and C are those chordal tones of a flat major Yes, that looks like a fit. Then over B flat major. So I'm just reading the comments. Okay. And then over the B flat major. G, A flat, G, F. Ends on an F. Rest comes to rest on an F. That points to the correct answer. So I can be quite confident now that we have the right answer. C minor, that's correct. C minor, I would say, is the, the easiest chord to spot, the strongest chord, and in fact, when I transcribe chords, I tend to just listen for the C minor chord and then listen to where it goes from there. So, well spotted, guys, that's C minor, our one chord. That was the chord we wanted that chord progression to resolve to the whole time. Repeated about eight or 16 times, finally resolves. these melody notes, can you tell me? What are these two notes? It is C, C, B flat, C. What note do you think it jumps to here? down to the fifth of the scale which is G and why I mean yes you can identify the interval but actually often when a melody jumps from the roots down and it sounds roughly halfway between the scale it's often jumped to the fifth that's what's happened here it's jumped down to G G repeated notes becomes easy C B C, B flat, C, B flat, C. It just runs up the scale. We don't have to figure out whether they're whole steps or half steps because we know the notes of C minor scale. C, D, E flat, D. And we'll just end with the chord listen to the bass line. We know that this is a C in the bass. Any idea for these bass notes? C. this. It's gone down. 
down to G, the fifth of the scale. What interval is that? Well, that's a half step. So even if you didn't figure out the, the descending fourth, when you hear this ascending half step, that should tell you, oh, it must have gone down to G because there's only a half step between G and A flat. And then this is A flat. Goes, finally goes to this note. Use your voice, just get creative to bridge the gap between them. Just have to hum quietly to yourself. Goes down to F, that's correct guys. And the final note. Quite a big interval. Do we have to figure out the interval? No, there's always another way. Next note is the starting note. We know that's a C. So you don't have to trip yourself out. Don't have to trip yourself up and get bogged down with this big interval. There's always another way. It's a B flat going up a whole step to our starting note, which is C. Well done, guys. Can you can, finally can you tell me what the chords are? What chords are indicated by these bass notes? Above C, we know C minor. Above G, that's correct, it's going to be G minor. Above A flat, that's correct, A flat major. And above F, that's correct, it's going to be F minor. And then B flat, what type of chord? That's correct, B flat major. Well done guys, that was the section I wanted to transcribe for this video. We've got one more song coming up, which is the Johnny Cash song, probably the best song, or the song I've been looking forward to the most. Um, before we do, if this, if this video is helping you, I'd really appreciate a round of thumbs up, so that would help me a lot. Of course, you can comment below for next week's live stream. Let me know uh, any songs you want me to consider. In fact, two of these songs today I took from last week's requests. So in a second, we're going to go to the final song, which is going to be Johnny Cash, his cover of Hurt. I'm glad this is helping you guys. Thank you for these lovely comments coming in. Uh, thank you, Sha Sharira, Sha Shahira, Shahia. Um, thank you, guys. No place to comment yet. OK. All right. Final song. Uh, this is an interesting song. This is the song Hurt, originally by Nine Inch, Nine Inch Nails. Um, but we're going to do the cover, which is by Johnny Cash. This always surprised me because I had that Nine Inch Nails album. It was the Di Downward Spiral when I was a teenager. I really enjoyed it, all the quirky, unusual time signatures and everything. Uh, use of modes and everything by uh, Trent Reznor. And then years later, and actually my favourite song was always Hurt, the last song on the album. I think it's track 13. But then a few years later, I was in a store and I heard this Johnny Cash singing the same song and I thought oh Johnny Cash must have written the original and I thought Trent Reznor must have just done a cover but it's surprising to me that I found it was the other way around that Johnny Cash did the cover of Trent Reznor's song so this is uh, Hurt I'll, I'll play it a bit we're going to transcribe this in C minor for a change so uh, let's see how it goes I have to you always have to recall how it goes okay honest I haven't actually played this song today uh, I did a warm-up with the other two songs but uh, this one I realized I didn't actually play it so I guess we'll go for the chords first of the verse We're in the key of C minor what do you think the first three chords are the 
first chord. Again, if you're just joining us, we're listening to the bass line, that's how you figure out chords. That's correct, it ends on C minor, it starts on C minor. C. What interval? That's a third, that's a minor third. Goes up to E flat. And then up a note from E flat is E flat, F. C. What does that tell us about the chords? The, we know the bass notes, the bass notes will tell us what the chords are. Above a C, we're going to have a C minor chord, not a C major chord, because we're in the key of C minor. Above an E flat, is it going to be E flat minor with a G flat? No, it's going to be E flat major. You've got it, Shahir. E flat major, and then above F, it's going to be F minor. Transcribe that just by listening to the bass line. And then once you've figured out the chord progression, it's going to get repeated. That's how most diatonic music works, a lot of repetition. In fact, all music uses a lot of repetition. It should be using repetition. Us as listeners, we like repetition. You don't want someone to just do new stuff all of the time. You need some stuff that you can sort of hang on to. Let's switch to okay now let's switch to the melody what are these notes what's what note do you think it starts on slightly wrong. I haven't listened to it today. A few people think it starts on C. Would you agree with that? It actually starts on G. I would say that the root C is probably the most likely note for a melody to start from. After all us composers we when we compose, we're thinking of a scale. The first note that springs to mind is often the root, the starting note, the one. The one. However, this melody actually starts on the fifth, and that, I would say, is the second most likely note for a melody to start on. G. And that's a common mistake, by the way. When I was learning to play by ear, that was probably the most common mistake I made, was confusing the root and the fifth. If you look at the notes of C minor scale, you do get this repeating interval pattern. You get C, E flat, F, G, well you can build the same interval pattern, G, B flat, C, D, and that's a common mistake. Um, so it's a good mistake to make, it means you're doing a lot of the stuff right. But in this case, this melody starts on the fifth of the scale, which is G. G, B flat, oh, I gave it away, sorry, I was meant to ask you guys. What interval is this? Yeah, you guys have got it. G, B flat, G, F. G, B flat, G. This is a pentatonic melody. You think of it as C minor pentatonic scale. C, E flat, F, G, B flat. Or you could call it E flat major pentatonic scale. E flat, F, G, B flat, C. The only difference is where you start this pentatonic scale, but it's the same. The major and the minor pentatonic scale is the same thing, same five notes. You can just arrange it to start from the major root or the relative minor root. So this me melody is pentatonic. You can hear that common shape number one, which I talked about in last week's live stream. Anytime you hear two whole steps in a melody, likely to be G, F, E flat, E flat, F, G. So, G, B flat, G, B flat, G, F, E flat, G. G, B flat, G, F, E flat, G. And what is that part? 
part of the melody. Does that sound like a common shape? Yes, that's what I call common shape number two. Minor third, whole step, and whole step. It went down to C. That's right, this common shape belongs from the root. C, E flat, F, G. Very common shape, that one. So in this case, it goes down to C, E flat, C, F, F, G. And then we basically figured it out. It just repeats now. that we all like. So I want you to listen to the bass line. Can you tell me what four notes I'm playing here within the key of C minor? Let me ask you this, can you hear the root in this four chord progression? Can you hear the most resolved note of all, the root? See which of these four chords you think the music could end on. Does this sound resolved? Does this one sound resolved? Could the music end on this chord? Or this chord? second chord, let's correct people, the second chord is C minor. This is the most resolved chord. Got some great answers coming in here. So now that we know that the second chord is C minor, that helps us a lot. This suddenly becomes a lot more easy. Now that we've spotted the root in this chord progression, we can go backwards and forwards from this note and we can figure out the rest of the chords. First chord, This chord is C minor, so how has this chord proceeded? You guys are nailing it here. This is a whole step, so the first chord has to be B flat. This is a B flat in the bass. That's going to indicate B flat major chord. Goes to C, so our C minor chord. How about this note? Use a stepping stone to sing the two notes. If I sing two whole, whole steps, turns out that this is a major third. Yes, that's correct. It goes down to A flat. So we have the first three chords done. B flat major. C minor, A flat, so that's going to be A flat major. How about the, the, the last note? That's correct, it is an E flat. Now it's quite a big leap, it's a fifth from A flat to E flat. Do you have to figure out a fifth? Well, you could do, that's always an option. But in this case, these four chords are what I call the four pop chords. They're the most commonly used chords. And this is a common pattern. In fact, the, the four pop chords can be played in many different, well, every different combination and they'll sound strong. And uh, that's how I figure this out. It's just a common shape. 
In fact, it's always a good guess that a pop song or 95% of diatonic music is going to be using these four chords in some combination. So by the time you've heard the first three chords, in this case, B flat major, C minor, and A flat major, you can actually guess that the next chord is going to be the remaining pop chord, which is E flat major, and that is the one chord of the relative major scale. So we figured out the chord progression. Can you tell me what the melody notes are? This one's a bit tricky, it's a big leap descending. So how about we just ignore the first few notes and listen to the end part. Sorry. Does that sound familiar, this end part? That is common shape number one, the most commonly used common sh uh, melodic shape in melodies. guys G F E flat F G used in basically every single piece of music ever written at some point very hard to write a melody that doesn't use this at some point it's a bit tricky this melody it's not a particularly you know melodic melody it's sort of jumping around Seventh. That's correct, people. It's B flat. B flat. It actually goes down. B flat F C E flat. B flat F C E flat. G F E flat F. B flat. Changes a bit the second time. Step gone up to C the root B flat C goes down to E flat so this melody is tricky um, this this melody is tricky I, I I think maybe if I'd played through it a bit more it wouldn't have been the perfect choice for this live stream but I did want to cover the chords in particular because that, that's a very common chord, chord shape. This melody doesn't really use common melodic shapes which is why it's tricky, it uses big jumps. Why did the composer choose this melody? Well it's more that they probably wrote the chords first and then they're sort of just jumping about chordal tones of the chords. So it is helpful that we figured out the chords first because that can sort of help us decide which note it's jumped down to over this B flat major chord when we have a you know we have an E flat here that matches the A flat major chord then we have an E flat major chord and the melody plays G F E flat F and then the F holds over and the chord goes to B flat major so it's very closely related the chord progression and the melody and really that's so so the main point was the chord progression if you're going to take one thing from this song remember this common shape chord progression B flat major C minor going to A flat major ending on E flat major The songs that use this common shape. OK, 
Okay, so we transcribed this in C minor. Um, I'll just play through the verse one more time. C minor, E flat major, and F. Got some questions coming in. Yeah, I, I do all of my transcribing in C minor, that's what I do. Um, I don't transcribe songs in the original keys. I never have done, I never will do. That's how I spot all these common shapes, because I have literally hundreds, probably thousands actually, of songs in my head that I've, I transcribe just from listening every day. And I'm listening to them all as though in the, in the same key of C minor, so you can spot the common recurring shapes in the melody, common recurring shapes in the chord progressions and the bass lines. And really, I think that's the key to success with ear training is that you, you transcribe every song in the same key. Because I've had friends who've attempted ear training and they've figured out songs in the key of the originals. And they never really, it's better than nothing, but still they never really learn the common shapes or they, they never learn how harmony works. They stay confused about music. And I get confused about music when I try transcribing in different keys. You know, every now and then I have to do a project where we're transcribing a song in a different key. And I find it, you know, it makes me confused, even to this day. So that's why I like to transcribe in every, in every song in the same key. And I choose the key of C minor, E flat major. So for this live stream and all of my live streams, we're always, always going to be transcribing songs in C minor. Okay, guys, so that was three songs. How do you find that? Uh, let's see. Uh, before I take questions, uh, let me just say, if you're watching this on the replay or, or live, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up if this has helped you. You can let me know any requests you have for next time, uh, any song requests, just by posting a comment below. I'm going to be doing this every Monday, 10am Pacific, for the foreseeable future. Uh, my wife is actually expecting our second child in March, so I'm trying to get as many of these done uh, before then, because I can't guarantee what life's going to be like after that. But for now, we're doing Monday morning, 10 a.m. And uh, the goal of this ear everyday ear training is so that you get to see how I listen to music. This isn't just how I turn it on for this live stream. I'm listening to music like this all of the time. I call it active listening. You're questioning everything that you hear. You're not focusing on lyrics and other things that most people listen to. I mean, I. I can't tell you the lyrics to these songs. I'm always focusing on the pitches, the bass lines, the common shapes. I'm comparing it, comparing each song with other songs that I can think of that use the same shapes. So that's the goal of this everyday ear training is to make this a habit that you continue for today and for the rest of the week. And then we'll do the same thing next week. So that's what I'm trying to do with these everyday ear training, with these ear training lives, sorry, is to make this a habit for you. So it's impossible for me to listen to music now and not question everything. And I wouldn't want to. You, you enjoy music a lot more when you're questioning, you know, the mechanics of it. You're learning, you know, you're learning from these composers. You can then use these shapes in your own music. So that's the goal. So uh, apart from that, we're going to start wrapping up. I uh, really appreciate you being here, guys. And um, let me think if you'd like more, more, uh, material on ear training, go to themusicalear.com or click on the link in the description box. I'm just adding more and more free resources to the website each week. You know, you can have a full explanation on my one key learning. I've posted a video there. You can listen to me explain how one key learning works, how it worked for me. And you can, um, you can sign up for free ear training email tips. These are weekly challenges from me. And you can also sign up for my free video series on ear training. It's a four video series. And of course, if you'd like to join my complete course on the musical ear, you can sign up for the waitlist there. I don't open it publicly, but when I do open it, I'll notify you by email. And uh, apart from that, just thanks very much for being here. I'll put some links in the description box to some more uh, videos from me for ear training. Uh, but thank you for all these lovely comments. Congratulations on the baby. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so my only hope is that I can keep going with this schedule. Uh, if I can, then I'll be doing it every morning, 10 a.m. Hope to see you guys next week. Hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you for being here. So I'm going to go and end the live stream. Of course, you can watch the replay. And uh, apart from that, uh, final round of thumbs-ups would be amazing. 
If this is the first video of mine you've seen, make sure you don't miss out on future videos by subscribing to my channel. No sleep for the professor, says Kerry. That's the thing I'm worried about, is uh, the sleep. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Okay, thanks guys. I'll, I'll end this live stream and I look forward to seeing you next week. All right, bye.